Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. It's time for an update, not just on the layout, but on the layout expansion as well. Before we talk about what's going on with the layout or the expansion, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's not going to happen. I am not going to redo my whole layout. I am not gonna be ripping it out and starting over. Uh, yes, at some point, I will most likely rip out this entire layout, but that won't be until a lot of other things happen. Uh, this garage that I'm in, while I'm very fortunate to have the space, is not in the best shape. The slab floor is cracked and damaged in multiple places. It, it really needs major conditioning or maybe even a self-leveler poured over it uh, before anything else is done inside. And that would be the first thing, or the second thing. The first thing would be a new roof. The roof in this building is horribly old. Uh, it's very old tongue and groove that's all split and cracked and broken. Uh, I've redone the dormer portion of the roof a couple times, and I'm not a roofer. It just keeps getting damaged. Uh, but it's that's kind of what happens when you don't have anything to attach the roofing material to. Uh, the wood's just rotted and gone in some spots. So... If I was able to haul sheets of plywood up to that level and do that, I would, but it's not something I'm capable of doing. So really nothing major will happen in here until that roof is done. Now, if I'm ready for a new layout and the roof is done, then it's going to be a heck of a project because this room will be gutted. Uh, I'll probably take down the wall behind me that the TV's on and make this room bigger. Uh, this is a four car wide garage. I'm using, well, one half of it now. If I were to do another layout, I'd probably use three quarters of the garage and leave that one last stall to either store a classic car that I don't have or <laughs> to use as a shop. After that, whether I expand the room or not, I need to frame out the exterior walls and put insulation in. Then I need to do that to the ceiling and need new windows and a new door. And after that's all done, maybe I would be ready to start doing a layout. So it's a major, major project because I don't see the point in ripping this out and starting over when the building's in the condition that it's in. What I do see as being reasonable is continuing on the path that I'm on, working on this layout and expanding it. Sure, I would love to put larger curves, at least on the outer loop, but it really wouldn't fit this layout. This layout was built with certain things in mind. And in order to make those things happen, I had to use a smaller radius turn. One of the things I need to get done in here, which really doesn't have much to do with the layout, is replace that TV. That thing is old and heavy, and it really does not have a good picture. Uh, I have another probably equally old uh, TV to go up there that's got a better picture, uh, but that thing up there is like 75 pounds. It is so heavy. I mean, it's not an LED, it's an LCD TV, and those are heavy. So I have to wait until one day when I feel energetic and strong and try to get that off the wall without dropping it through the layout. That once that TV is swapped out, then I can really start working a little bit more permanently on this section and work towards a more detailed layout. I've been working a little bit on this middle section here. I've added another switch now there are two switches and uh, they're both manual at this point because it's not like the trains are going to be running over them as much as I'm just going to be moving a couple of things back and forth. I also cut both of these switches down, took off about that much uh, so that the spurs would not be too far apart. But for storing some engines, it's working just fine. I have not gotten any work done on the engine house except I've added this third track. One of the things I did this past weekend, get my air conditioner installed. I took out the one pane and I kind of permanently installed the air conditioner. And when I'm not using it, I have this panel that will completely cover it. I'll still have light from the top window and you won't see the AC. I finally painted the ceiling here. That one section was just waiting for me to finish. And I got the strip LED light installed all the way around the room.
and it sure doesn't look like it now, but I spent a lot of time cleaning in here and it looked great until I started trying to mock up the expansion of the layout. And then I had to shove a bunch of stuff back towards the center of the room. Well, it doesn't look like much, but it's a start. This section of the room was completely just packed with stuff. Uh, it's still got a lot of stuff over there, but I've moved a good bit of it so that I can actually get over there and start mocking up the expansion. I've done some design on any rail, but I can only do software so much before I just need to get my hands on the track. What we see here is more or less what the layout's going to be like. Uh, it will obviously be at the same level as the current layout, uh, but I'm thinking this 4x8 sheet here will more or less be that size, and that silver table in the back is about two feet out from the wall. So we'll have this 4x8 sheet here in front of us, and then two feet against the wall by the window, and two feet deep where that table is, before it goes down to just one single track that goes all the way back to reconnect to the rest of the layout. One of the things that was tripping me up with this whole section was the size of the turns. From the beginning, I was thinking I would squeeze in the largest turn I could. And that turns out to be 096. But after looking at it in the software and seeing how much space it takes up, I decided that it doesn't make sense to put a huge diameter over here when the rest of the layout is not like that. Uh, it might be fun, but it's not really going to increase what I can operate on the layout. I figured it might be more cohesive to keep the turns the same diameter all the way through the layout. So I'm thinking 054 on the outside and 042 on the inside. And it also makes it feel a lot bigger because otherwise the turn would be coming almost all the way down to here and taking up that whole space. So with, I think with smaller turns and longer straights, I'll be able to get in more scenes. And I have some pretty interesting ideas for this side of the layout. Most of the rest of the layout is mountainous. And I'm thinking this needs to be more of a valley. Back there against the window or under the window, I'm thinking of framing the table out so that it drops down so I can box it out uh, so, there's, so it's very deep. And what that would enable me to do, a large trestle over that space or another type of bridge, and I think it would really add a lot of interest. You might not be able to see it really well from the center of the room, but once you come over here, it's going to be like a big centerpiece. Uh, and then I would be able to come around this way, and I think a couple more bridges, maybe a big river. Because I did want a big river on this layout, and it just never happened. So smaller turns more straight track, a big ravine with bridge or trestle, and a smaller but still large river and some bridges over here. With this four by eight sheet here, that leaves me about two and a half feet of an aisleway right here. And I feel that that's plenty of room to be able to comfortably walk in and get to the layout. The back corner over there, I really haven't developed that area as much as I thought I was going to. That may change as I continue working on the layout. Changing the outer two loops is going to alter that whole section. Uh, the plan is still big mountain here, um, but removing the tracks from here might open up some other possibilities. Uh, but it's also never going to be that visible unless you walk all the way around the layout. I do think it would be kind of fun to squeeze in some little fun scenes back there that, you know, kind of feel like a little discovery. If you actually bother to go back there, you'll be like, oh, look at this, this is so neat. I don't know what that would be yet, but we'll find out in the future. One of the design requirements initially for this layout was that there was nothing I would need to duck under. I don't have the best back and I doubt it will get better over the years. Uh, so I did not want to have to scoot under anything, uh, hunch over, get down on all fours to get under anything. So that's why my layout doesn't have any duck unders on it. So as I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to connect these two sections of layout, I obviously need a lift out of some sort. I could design it so that the whole section just lifts off and I can put it down, or I could do 
something like Zach over at Country Bunker did. He ended up with three track wide bridge that they cut holes in between the tracks to make it look more like a base of a bridge. And then the whole thing pivots up. Uh, I know plenty of people do bridges that pivot up like that. I just kind of like the way he went about doing it. Um, so whether I lift it completely off or it does actually lift up, uh, will come down to how the mechanics of it work, really. I'd rather something that, that hinges. So that is what I'm going to work towards. One of the things I'm trying to figure out is what direction these tracks take. Do they just come straight out and continue the line that they're on right now and come straight over to this table before turning? Or do I angle them slightly and have them come at an angle to the table so that I'm starting all the way at the edge? And that's something I keep designing and redesigning in the software. But regardless of whether these come straight or an angle, it doesn't really alter the plan that much. There will be two tracks going around the perimeter. And then on the other side, I'm thinking the inner loop will come back at an angle to the main table and continue on after the current turn. Whereas the outer loop will stay against the wall and run the entire length of this wall back to the corner and then rejoin the track where it is now. I've talked in the past about my inability to properly plan and how that's put me in a, a position you know, for a good part of this layout. But I'm at the same point now where I'm like, I don't want to plan, I just want to build. I have to go back to the software, do my best to come up with a little bit more solid planning, and then it's going to be time to order wood and track. Maybe before I even order the wood, I will get another couple sheets of foam and mock it all up on the floor to make sure I like the way it works and then build the table under it. Either way, I've made progress in that I've cleaned out this section of the room enough that I can actually get over here to work. And I just, I'm excited. I wish I could take a week off and just work on the layout, but that's just not gonna happen. got shirts again with a new and improved logo. So if you've been wanting one, follow the link, go over to Teespring, or Spring I think as it's now called, and order yourself a shirt. Or a few shirts. They're currently available in white and black with more colors coming soon. I do get a few dollars from every shirt sold, so each shirt does help support the channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on D.A. Griffin Hobby.